Um, my name is Pat Murphy, and I'm a first-year intern for the Master Gardener program in Fairfax County. It's been a dream of mine for many years to be, become a Master Gardener, so I'm finally um, getting to the point that I can um, take some time and pursue my hobby. Uh, I currently have a community garden, and that's where I started learning how to grow garlic. Um, one of the things about garlic is that it's not a lot of work, but you get such great reward. So as I go through this presentation, I'm going to give you the basic steps, a little bit of background, and some suggestions on how to grow garlic, okay? Uh, first of all, garlic is part of the Allium family, and that's a pretty large group of um, plants. Most of them that we know of are edible, but there are Alliums that are decorative, which actually um, we plant in the fall and they come up in the spring and they have the big, large purple heads. So you might have seen those in the, um, a garden decorative border. But most of the alliums that we eat are the onions, leeks, shallots, and chives. And today we're just gonna focus in on garlic. Um, there's two types of garlic. One is the hard neck garlic, which is on your left and um, it's also called top setting, and they have the large bulbs. Those are the ones that have the large bulbs. They don't have as many cloves, but they have really very, um, very large bulbs. They're known for setting up a scape or sending up a scape, which is a flower stalk. And here's a, a picture of one here. It comes out um, almost towards the end of its growth. And this is something we'll talk about in a little bit, that you remove this in order to give the um, bulb a little bit more energy. So it's, it's a flower pod. And actually Mary, who's here tonight, she took this picture from her community garden at her school. And it's actually a close up of a garlic scape uh, in flower. And it's so beautiful. I thought we could look at the, um, the, the shape of this. You know, all around us in the garden, there's, there's beauty. And the shape of this scape is very decorative and beautiful. And this seed pod is also beautiful. So the first type is the hardneck garlic, and that is for northern climates. In, in Virginia, we're, we border north, northern, southern climate, so you can grow both easily in um, a zone seven garden. Now the softneck garlic is usually the one that we see in the grocery store. The bulbs are a little bit smaller, uh, and the cloves are a little bit smaller. But the reason why the grocery stores use them is because they store longer. They have a longer shelf life and for shipment, uh, it's a lot easier to, um, you know, for commercial reasons. In the Southern um, climates, south of here, they prefer to grow the soft neck because they have milder winters and they don't need a longer um, chill time. So there are two types. They both have equally good quality, both have a variety of different types within each, but the main difference is how long they chill and how long they keep. But for our purposes, we could use both, and I have both in my garden. Um, we're planting in zone seven, and so we need to start garlic in the fall. Some people do grow it in the summer, but really the best garlic time is in the fall. You plant it mid-October into November. Why fall as opposed to spring? Because you could grow it in both climate times. Um, in the fall, it gives the plant a little bit more time to develop the growth for the bulb, the root development, and it gets a, a little bit of a jump start of the season. And garlic does require some dormant period, some chill time in the winter. So that really helps us with the, with the bulb size. Uh, when you're starting off with garlic, it's pretty much a no-fuss type of plant. You do need basic soil requirements, rich, well-draining soil, and I always enrich my soil in the fall with compost. So that would be a good start for planting your bulbs or your cloves. Um, and then you don't deal with any sort of fertilizing until the spring in early April approximately, when they start coming back to life after the winter and the weather's warming up, you can give them a couple of treatments of a high nitrogen fertilizer. And I just use fish emulsion, um, but something to give it a little extra energy boost. 
You don't want to over fertilize because you'll have more leaves than bulbs. So the idea is you want to make sure that the plant is growing as much and putting its energy into that bulb development. Um, how to plant them. If you've ever planted tulips or daffodils, it's pretty much the same type of um, process. First of all, you have your large cloves, your large bulb rather, and you break it into pieces and you have your individual cloves. And these will um, be varying in size. And for planting out, you really want to just pick the best of the cloves. So if there's six or seven cloves in your bulb, pick the five that are really big. The bigger the clove, the more chance that it will produce into a bigger bulb. Take the other few that you have, put them in a bag, and bring them back to your kitchen and use them and cook. Um, when you plant your clove, you want to go pointy side up and the root side down. And it takes about two inches deep in the soil. And then you want to space them out between four and six inches um, between cloves. And that will be pretty much all you have to do. Um, I always cover my beds with a chopped leaf mold or leaf mulch, and that way it protects the soil from the frost that we might have, the thawing and freezing. It might give some problems to the bulbs because you don't want them pushing up. What you'll find in the fall when you plant them, they'll start growing and they'll send up a little stalk, a little green leaf shoot. Don't worry about it. That's fine. It's not coming up too soon and it's not going to hurt about what they're what it's doing pretty early on when you first plant it is it's, it's developing its roots and they're starting to send up a leaf. Don't worry about that. That leaf is just a starter leaf and it's nothing to worry about. You'll have to wait about nine months to get what you really want. Um, something came up when I was talking to um, Tori about questions that people had. And I want to just say you don't need a community garden plot or a large plot of land to grow garlic. You could grow garlic in a container. The only thing you have to worry about when you grow in a container is that you need to have a container that's pretty good size and it has to um, have a drainage hole. The worst thing that could happen is you put out a garlic, no drainage hole in your your um, bulbs, your cloves will rot. So you don't want that. You fill it up with a good potting mix. And then you add a little bit of granular fertilizer, 555 mix in the soil, even though it might have some in the potting um, mix that you have, add a little extra. But the difference between planting a container and planting in the ground is the depth. For container gardening, you need to make sure you really sink that bulb, that clove, deep, about six inches as opposed to four in an earth bed. An earth bed is insulated, um, but a, something in a pot in the winter, you're losing some of the, you know, you're losing heat because it's not, um, it's getting exposed by all sides by the air. Find the sunniest location you can in your, in your, um, around your house that has um, winter sun. So what you want to do that, keep it in the winter sun, I would keep it if on a south side of a building that you might have or the, the place that gets also rain because you don't want to have to always water. So uh, nothing like on a porch. It has to be exposed in a patio area or something where it's not covered. The other thing is you might just want to try some garlic out and put them in your food um, forest, your foodscaping landscape. Um, we had a great talk from Bree Arthur earlier this year in our Master Gardener program, and she talked about planting vegetables in your front yard along with your ornamentals. And she recommended garlic as a border in your um, front yard, your perennial ornamental yard, because it makes a great edging. It's a deterrent not only for rodents, rabbits, but also it's supposed to deter deer in some way or another because they don't really like the smell. Um, so what happens? You put your garlic in the ground and before you know it, it's, it's March, April, you're looking out in your garden and it's really started to grow. Um, 
the one thing you have to start looking for is if you have hard neck variety is that you need to, to start looking for the scape. And the scape is the seed head that comes up in the plant. And it really looks like, um, it's like a curly, it will, when it's at its peak, it's a, it kind of starts curling around. You just cut that off. And that's actually a delicacy. Whoops, sorry. Uh, it's actually a delicacy. Um, you can use it to um, make pesto. It's a milder flavor than garlic. You can stir fry it. Some people freeze it and chop it up and use it as a garlic substitute in dishes. Um, you can get, get them at restaurants. High-end restaurants will sell scapes uh, as, on their menu when it's in season. So don't throw it away in the compost bin. If you have scapes, celebrate the delicacy and try a new recipe. Um, the fun time is the harvest time. Um, harvest will be approximately late June to early July. You're going to have to look at the plant to give you the signals as to exactly when you should harvest. There's a, the picture here is my friend Susan who gardens with me. And this was one third of our haul that we had this year at our community garden. We had about 25 plants in that, that box. And I took another 75 home, actually a fourth. I, took, we, I had about 100 um, bulbs this year, 100 plants. So Susan took some home and then I spread them out all over my house. So the one thing about garlic you'll find is that it's a good gift to share with people and to share um, with family and friends. Um, so when do you know it's ready? It's going to start looking kind of peaked. The tops are going to start to die back a little bit. And you want to look for one third to one half of the leaves turning brown and kind of getting floppy. Um, so when it's time to harvest, do not pull up the leaves like you would a carrot. What you want to do is they're pretty deep in the soil. You're going to have to loosen up the soil around the bulbs. And then you're going to carefully kind of wedge the, the soil up. And then you can pull from, um, from the leaves. But do not just pull because you're going to damage the bulbs. So be very careful with the bulbs as you're... Um, as you're harvesting. Remember, you've waited so long to get these. You plant them in October and it's July before you even can enjoy them. So just treat them um, gently as, as you pull them up. Don't wash the bulbs. Do not try to wash the soil off. Take everything, shake a little bit of the, the roots off from the big clumps of soil that might be on the, the bottom, but leave everything else um, because that's part of the curing process. You'll get rid of all of that extra when it's time to cure. So here's a picture of my um, back porch that's screened in. And this is what 75 garlic bulbs look like. <laughs> um, you don't need a fancy system to, to dry your garlic. I have two sawhorses and a couple of old wire shelving units that I just spread out and I just keep them out there for about 14 days. Your, your back of the, um, the patio, smells like a, a wonderful Italian restaurant for those that time, but it's, it's really a quick and easy process. So you can either hang them or lay them across something with, when you get a lot of ventilation, but you need to have them away from the sun. When it's time to clean them up, what you want to do is make sure that you do not um, cut off the, um, the leaves from the the major leaves from the soft neck because you might want to braid them. So if, you, if you're going to braid them, and there's a picture down below on the screen of braiding, um, that's a nice way to store them up. But it doesn't take long to do this whole process. The one thing I want, as I was looking through the research that I want to pass on to you is that some people think that, oh, you've got all of this garlic, let's break off the cloves and let's store them in oil and put them in our refrigerator. Do not do that. Um, University of Maryland extension, that when I was reading, they say, do not put garlic in, in oil for long-term storage in the, um, the refrigerator. It's best kept in the freezer to avoid getting botulism poisoning. So be warned. The garlic freezes really well in pesto and other things. So you'll have it six to nine months if you keep it in a cool pantry closet or a basement. And, um, 
that's you know that's the thing just make sure that it doesn't get a lot exposed to a lot of light and heat okay garlic is pretty carefree and i found one problem um when i was looking at research on this and actually i should have been looking at this earlier because i had a little bit of problem with this white rot on garlic you know because you don't really do anything to the garlic you plant it in october and you just leave it alone until you come back to the garden in the early spring you don't water it you are let nature take its course um so i when i came back to the garden in march you know, some of the garlic was beautiful and healthy, and then others were kind of like peaked, and they just were, they looked soft. They didn't look right. So I pulled them up right away. And um, what I had, I either had some sort of um, rot. I thought it was just based on poor drainage in the site that I had it on. But it's actually, a, um, it's a disease. Uh, so, and it will look like it's soft and mushy, or it'll have like white and black mold almost it looks like and that's actually um the reproductive stuff that um that's on this and this is part of the virus the, the rot what you want to do is take them out and destroy all of the um garlic that looks like this and the one thing you have to do is you cannot plant garlic or any other allium family plant for five years you need to plant garlic or onions or chives or leeks in another part of the bed because it, it lives in the soil for five years. That's kind of depressing. Um, the other way you know that you might have this problem is they're not, the, the leaves look a lot different than a regular leaf from the garlic. From the, um, from the garlic. It's yellowy. It just really doesn't look healthy and they're a lot smaller. So you'll know you, if you have this problem. But to be honest with you, I don't think it's that common a problem as long as you rotate your garlic over the years and not plant it all in the same place year after year, it will probably prevent a lot of that problem. Okay. How to prevent the white rot? You buy good quality bulbs or if you're buying plants um, that have been certified as being um, disease free. Never purchase bulbs from the grocery store and plant it for a couple of reasons. Once you don't know the type of garlic it is, you don't know where it's from, you don't know if it's been treated with chemicals um, or some sort of preventative things that they might spray on it to make it store longer. Start with fresh, healthy bulbs. So when you have your um, first experience with garlic, it will be successful. Um, the one thing you have to do to prevent the root rot is to, once you get those plants out, do not compost them, just put them in the trash. And as I said, you don't plant anything of the allium family in that same area for four to five years. I don't know if that's why I got the problem because I had done it two years in a row in the same spot or um, just bad luck, but I'll be more cautious next time and rotate my garlic a little bit better. Okay. Um, where do you buy bulbs? If you're not supposed to buy them in the grocery store, where can you buy them? One of the things as you start um, working with garlic, every year that you have a harvest, you hold back your five or six or 10 biggest bulbs. And you keep that as your seed stock for the following planting. So once you have purchased a couple of varieties that you like and they're growing well in your garden from a, a, some merchant online or on a at the garden center, you have seed stock for the future. So it might be a little bit pricey initially to get some of these um, more specialty bulbs, but if they grow well in your garden, always hold back your five or 10 or however many that you want for the next planting and keep them aside. And then that's, you can just keep planting and they get acclimated to your soil and your conditions. And to be honest with you, when I, I don't label everything really well. I don't even know what I have in, the, in some of the stuff because I've, I've tried different varieties over the last year or so. And once they're in the ground, they all look the same to me until you take them out and you can tell by color, perhaps which one is which. You can tell the difference between soft neck and hard neck by literally feeling the neck of the, the plant when it dries out. That soft neck will be bendable and hard neck will have a stiff, um, growth that's in there that 
they, the bulbs fr form around. Um, these are a couple of the companies that I've used. I've used um, Southern, Seed, Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. I've used Burpee Park, Johnny Select Seeds. Um, there's a lot of different places you can get bulbs. The one thing you have to know about bulbs is that you have to order them now. You probably needed to order them last week, Brad, because the closer we get to fall, some of these places will be selling out of the stock that they have. So um, get some now. Um, mail order if you want. These are just a few of the list of, of vendors that have them. These are the ones I've used. I'm not being sponsored by them for any. So you might find something that's a little bit better. Uh, and then the local garden centers, I believe, will have them in late September. I know Merrifield usually has things like this, and I actually called Burke Nursery this afternoon and I asked him if he's going to have garlic. I said, well, I'm giving a presentation for the Master Gardeners. I want to know if I can put your name on the list of possible places that will have, that will have um, bulbs for the people who are interested. So he said, sure, sure, I'll get some. So who knows? Uh, he said he had them in the spring and he thinks he'll have them in the fall too. So we know Merrifield probably will and then Burke Nursery. And I don't think the big box stores carry them. I could be wrong, but um, I haven't looked for them there. I just tend to do a lot of mail order things. Ooh, it's a lot of information. Um, uh, the other thing that I have on this is the uh, resources that I use to create the slideshow um, from University of Maryland Extension and University of Georgia Extension Service. So does, that's it. Does anyone have any Questions? I have a question. Sure. Um, what might there What might there be um, as a companion um, type crop to go with to grow with garlic? You know. Right. Um, let me think. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I, I tend to, because it takes up so much space and so much time, yeah. um, I put it in and then I usually will put beans next to it. What, because what happens is after you plant the garlic, you'll take it out in July. And that's when I start putting extra zucchini in and things like that. Mm, um, I'm not sure if something does not um, grow well with it or not. Does anyone else know who's planted garlic before? So you don't want to have any peas next to your garlic. Um, typically, I think garlic is antagonistic to peas. Oh. Okay, that's so, a good one. I didn't know that. Good. I think. I'll have to, um, I'm looking in a book right now. Yeah, I'm looking at my We stuff. have a comment from Karen saying that she did get some garlic at Home Depot in the spring. Oh, good. Oh, good. And I'm not sure if they'll have it in the fall, but um, from what all I've read and, and the way that a lot of people um, garden at, at, the, um, at the community garden where I am, most people plant their garlic in the fall. So um, it might be a different variety in the spring. I'm not sure, um, but that's good to know. And a second question that I have. For elevated garden, for elevated gardening, mm -hmm. um, do you think that planting garlic? The reason why I was asking about companion is because we just have a small space, you know, with the elevated garden. And right. I'm thinking, oh my goodness! I have looked at yours, and I thought, I don't know if that's gonna be, if that's gonna work. So, well, you could do it in pots, Jennifer. Um, okay. You could try it in, in a pot, or you can. If you have a flower bed that's in, you know, a little bed, you know, in the front or the side of your house, you could put some in there. Hmm. But the problem is it takes up a lot of real estate. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't need to plant 100 bulbs. You know, I kind of went a little crazy this year. I, um, I might cut back in the future, but my friends like it because they get, you know, they get little gifts of fresh garlic. So, um. But you can you can try it. You know, even just get one or two heads of garlic and you plant four or five on one side, four or five on the other, sort of like a border. Hmm. Okay, that's an idea. Because you don't need to plant a massive amount to get the enjoyment from them. 
Pat, I, I'm just going to follow up with that um, first, just to follow up with the chat. Um, John said he used to work at Home Depot, and they usually do have it both in the fall and the spring, but never yeah. a lot, just in case yeah. anyone's not seeing the chat. Um, and um, I loved your presentation. I'm excited to try garlic this year, so thank you very much. Um, we had one other question in the chat. They were asking um, what braiding is. Does it make it just store la longer? Is it just pretty? Um, is there any other benefit to it other than being pretty? <laughs> um, well, this is a way to store it because depending on, um, only the soft neck you can braid because that's with the leaves and, and there's no hard stem in the middle. And what I, I, I do bunches of like six or eight, and you can hang it. So I have garlic hanging in my basement, like on my shelving unit, cause, and I just go and I snip off um, a, a bulb as I need it. And it's also decorative. But you don't have to store them in um, in a braid form, but you can, I would recommend either saving the onion bags from the grocery store, the ones that are kind of like mesh, you should have some ventilation. Don't just put it in a plastic container. It has to have air breathing um, around it so it doesn't get moldy. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, another question is, um, it was my question. Some I usually buy store-bought garlic and sometimes it starts to sprout. Is it just because it's, I've had it for too long? Am I not storing it correctly? Is it not good once it starts to sprout? Well, you can, you can use it when it sprouts, but I think a lot of the garlic should be kept in like a dark, if garlic containers that are kind of like dark, like pottery with like little air vents in it, it doesn't really like light. And it, it, I think by, when, the, when it gets to, and sits around in light too long, it sends up a message that it's, you know, it's time to grow. And some of the, the garlic I found too at the grocery store is not that fresh. So it's, it's towards the end of its life. And we don't know that. We just pick it up and it either gets soft quickly or um, I use it still when it sprouts. What I do is I just slice the, the clove and I just pick out the green part. And I'm still alive. My family's still alive. So I think it's just, it, it's, it's not poisonous or anything. We have another comment from the uh, chat box that states that they got uh, garlic from Irish Eyes online this spring, which is, I think, similar to what you were saying. Mm -hmm. That's that's a company, Irish Eyes? Irish Eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good one. I haven't heard. I, there's so many different companies. I just put out a few of the basic ones that people might know about. There's a lot of boutique, um, small, small companies that are growing different types of varieties. That's what the fun of garlic is. When we go to the grocery store, we just get usually the same type of, you know, we don't generic garlic, but you can really get into the connoisseur part of it with the different, because the flavors and the strengths. Um, it's kind of an interesting um, plant. It's like tomatoes. It's not just one tomato variety. There's all different varieties. There's well, another can... comment or question actually, yeah. really is a great question. Since I'm not a good gardener, I always have these problems. It says after you get the garlic rot and should stay away for years, can you start anything else in that same space? Or what, is there something you have to do? Nothing in the garlic family, the allium family. So no leeks, no onions, no chives. Did anything else? Anything else would be okay. Anything else can work. It doesn't cross... Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to scare people about the garlic rot. I just wanted to say that there, it's not completely pest free. There's no bugs that will eat it. But in my research, that's what I found. And I think I had a touch of it this past year. You know, it, the soil has to drain well. That's the main thing when you're planting garlic. You, you can't, the bulbs can't sit there in a low end of something if you don't have good drainage because it's just going to rot. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find out how, this is Raphael. Uh, how long can you uh, store garlic before you put it in the ground? Um, like I harvested my garlic in June and I'll put it in October. So it will still be viable because it stays fresh. If you cure it correctly and you keep it dry and cool, um, they, they say six to nine months. Wow. So, you know, we, we, what, July, August, September, October, like three or four months is when we put it in the ground. You wow. try to get it in before the first hard frost, so it has a little bit of a jump start to grow before the really cold weather hits. Because if you order them online, they'll ship, 
them to you at the time that they think it's good to put in the ground for our, our zone. Mm. And then I'm sure the garden centers, I know that should be doing it close to that September, mid-September, end of September for the October um, planting. And, and from one garlic, um, how many of those little cloves can you get? At least five, I would think, five or six. Okay. But you don't, you only plant the biggest ones. The biggest okay. ones have the most energy. So leave the small ones and bring them home and cook with those first. Okay. So you probably get four or five, uh, depending on the variety. The, the hard neck garlic will have the bigger cloves, but less of them, whereas the soft neck, the cloves are a little bit smaller and you have more. Got it. Okay. I have a question about planting garlic in among other um, perennials in the flower bed. As you mentioned earlier, uh, is it compatible with most of our common perennials? Like if I planted them next to cone flowers or would, would any of those um, be incompatible with garlic? I don't so, really know. So I actually, Pat, I, I just looked that up and there, okay. it, they actually, there's a book called Tomato, Carrots Love Tomatoes. And there's another book that's called mm -hmm. um, Roses Love Garlic. Yeah. So yeah. one thing about garlic and onions and alliums is that they are compatible to roses. Um, and they do mention that in this book and then there's a whole nother book. But they do mention that peas and, and beans and legumes are not compatible to garlic um, or to onions. And I, I have experienced that in my own garden. I have seen that where they actually were growing away from each other, literally on a slant. Mm -hmm. um, but um, there are a lot of things that garlic and onion will do um, very beneficially to like carrots. They will um, because onion and garlic, because of their smell, they will um, deter the, the yeah, carrot right. fly. Mm -hmm. And then the carrots will deter the onion fly. So they will be a beneficial to each other. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of plant garlic and onions and carrots all in the same bed, um, that, that is uh, usually going to be compatible for you. But doing it in, with your perennials is not a bad idea, as Pat suggested earlier. Yeah, the Brie, Brie had said that when she came to speak and I got her book and she suggested using it as like a border because she has a problem with um, rabbits and, and deer and where she lives and so she plants it as a border so they're not going nibbling at your tulips as they come up. Thank you. I think that's a great idea. I think it's a really great idea to, to utilize some of those just natural pest control. And one thing that I just want to say is, as I'm leaving um, is that I want people not to be afraid to make mistakes and to try different things, you know, and in trying new vegetables, if, you know, it took me a couple of years to even think about garlic growing as, you know, I'll get it at the grocery store. It's just, you know, it's easy to pick up, but there is a big difference as you know, when you grow your own vegetables, that everything is fresher, you have more control over what goes into soil and for garlic it's a pretty easy plant overall a uh, lot less fussy than tomatoes or zucchini or other things that really are invaded by pests in our area hey, hey pat it, um, if we have time i have a, a quick question i hope it's a quick question uh someone gave me um a garlic Mm -hmm. and I planted it and it's growing and I have absolutely no idea what to do with it because it's the kind of garlic that it creates pods on the tips. It grows up and creates pods and then they fall down and plant themselves. Oh, so yeah. I am just watching it grow. It, are you familiar with that at all? Um, it, I think that's the way that they reproduce. I don't know if um, what you do with those when you get them. What I, I found that a couple of my bulbs did that and I just pulled them up and I just used them as regular garlic. I took off the, the stalk part. Um, it will make a beautiful flower like Mary's picture that I used at the beginning. It makes a beautiful, you know, and it's great for beneficials I'm sure that are coming in to pollinate. 
um, see what happens. If, yeah. I'm just going to watch it, it then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if you I want am. it for supper, just take it out. If not, see what happens with it. We have another question in the chat. It says, are planting and care of other allium family items similar? Yes and no. I think garlic is a little more carefree than onions. But they all are pretty easy to grow. Um, onions, you could grow in a different way. Um, leeks, you can start from seed and have small plants. Onions, you can get small starts um, or slips, which are small plants. Um, but they're all pretty carefree. I haven't had any major problems with any of them. Leeks tend to take, for some reason, a little bit longer, and you can overwinter those too if you just started them later. Um, onions, I had my first success with onions this year and started them as slips, which are not the little bulbs you buy, but just after little plants. And I had a really good harvest with them. You start those in the spring as soon as you can, and then by July, once your garlic is finished curing, that's when you have to take out your onions and start curing your onions. <laughs> so they kind of follow each other. 